In this Autodesk Maya tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly 3D model a disco ball, and we'll put some mirror finishes on the disco ball so it reflects light and is very colorful. The first thing to do in Maya to make a disco ball is to go to the poly modeling shelf and click on sphere. Now we have a sphere, press F to frame the sphere, but disco balls usually have squares and these look like rectangles. So in the attribute editor of Maya, click polysphere one and change the subdivision axes to 30. Great. Now, if I go right click, face mode, and I select one of these faces and I press W and I move it, notice that it is connected. So we don't want that because we want to adjust our disco ball to make it look a little bit more handmade. So I'm going to right click, go to vertex mode, marquee select all the vertices, then hold shift right mouse button, and we're going to detach components. Now, if I go back to face mode, I can select this face, press W, and it is detached. This is great. So now I'm gonna press spacebar, and then I'll hover over the front view, press spacebar, press F to frame, and then I can marquee select every other row. This is the center row, so I'll select here, then I'll hold shift and I'll select this row, then I'll select this row, then I'll select this row. Same thing down here, I'll select the opposite every other rows, marquee select. By being in this isometric perspective view, we only select those rows. Then press E on your keyboard, and then just rotate them a little bit so that they're offset, because a disco ball a lot of times is offset, and you don't have to make it perfect. You could rotate these individually to have even more funk, but I think this is fine for right now. Then I'm gonna press Q, spacebar, go back to perspective view, and then I'm going to highlight all the faces, press Control E or Command E to extrude the faces. Now, you can use the extrude controls right here on Poly Extrude Face 1, but I wanna do it over here in the attribute editor on the right. If you don't see your attribute editor, click this icon in the top right. Then we're going to uncheck keep faces together and notice these are tied together. It's the same control. Then in local translate, we're gonna type 0 .002 and you'll see that all the faces are now extruding out. But we wanna add a little bit of randomness to it. So we have this randomness slider because disco balls are made by hand. So if I really crank up the randomness, it can get insane real quick. So maybe not so much. And then we also wanna get a little rotate. So I'm gonna type one, one, one. So they rotate by about one degree in random, random amounts. And then they shouldn't be bumping each other because they're extruding out on a sphere. But every once in a while you might get one like right here, they're touching. So what we can do is bring down the scale by typing 0.99. 0.99 and 0.99. That should help with any collisions. If you notice that you're still getting collisions, you can lower that scale and then just choose the amount of randomness you want for your disco ball. And then we can press Q. And now we're gonna right click and go to object mode. And then I'm going to assign a new material. So I'll right click, assign new material. I'll select Arnold and then AI standard surface. In the AI standard surface presets, select Chrome and replace. I like to name my shader, so I'm gonna call this Disco Ball Shader. Next, we need to add a light. So I'll zoom out a little bit. I'll go to the Arnold shelf and grab an area light, press W, and we can move this light out. So you see right here, we're moving the light out, and then I can change its exposure to something like six and then i can duplicate this light because lots of lights for a, a disco is smart so i'll hold shift and clone the light press e and then rotate it and if i hold j i can rotate and snap and then what we want to do is go to the arnold open arnold render view and if we click play you'll notice that we do see our disco ball but there's not a lot of light reflected around the scene because it's in this dark void, so it doesn't work very well. But if we add some geometry, like a floor or a dance floor, then it'll work a lot better. So here we are in our scene. I'm gonna press poly modeling shelf and get a plane. Press R on your keyboard to scale it up. Then press W, bring this down. And then if we go to Arnold render view and click play, 
you'll notice that now we can start to see the floor reflections. So for your disco ball to work, you really need an environment of objects to reflect on it. So you can put all kinds of extra objects in the scene. So if you want something shiny in the scene or colorful objects, for example, if I get a cone and I press R to scale this cone up and then I move it and then I can right click on it to assign a new material and we'll give it a shader, an AI standard surface, and we'll go ahead and go to this color. And we'll change the color to something like red. And if we click play here, now you can start to see this red reflection in the disco ball. So what makes a disco ball or any mirrored finish look like a mirror is not that it's shiny or silver, it's that it reflects the environment all around it. So an easy way to have an environment reflect everywhere is to put a sky dome. So if I go to the Arnold shelf and I click sky dome, now that's too bright. I can see everything on my disco ball, but it's super bright. I don't necessarily want that. What I want is all the reflections from a sky dome on the disco ball. So the way we can do that is go to the attribute editor for the sky dome and right here on color, if I click this little checkerboard, then I can select file. And for the file, I'll select this folder. And then here I have an EXR file of Shanghai. And I pick this one because it has lots of colors. So pick something with colors and darkness and light spots. So it kind of looks like a dance area. And I'll select open. Autodesk Maya makes a texture out of it. And here you can already see the reflections on the disco ball, but we don't want to see this background. So if you go to the sky dome in the attribute editor, I can come down here and I can turn the camera visibility off. So now I just get all these cool reflections on the disco ball, yet it's still out there in space. So this is really great. You can use any HDRI image for this. There's lots of them on the web. I got this from Polyhaven. So if you look here, this image is right here and it's a CC0 license. So definitely check out Polyhaven, they're a great resource. And so now I have this and I can render out that ball. But the problem with Arnold rendering in Maya is that there's no reflective caustics. So for example, if I go to poly modeling and I get a cube and then I press R to scale it and then we scale it down to be more like a wall, scale it up, scale it this way, press W to move it. And you'll notice that this wall just doesn't have any reflections from the disco ball. The disco ball reflects the wall, but there's no really caustics or anything over here. And a lot of times a disco ball will have reflected light or other things on it. So what we can do is fake that by creating another sphere. So for example, I create a sphere and I'm gonna hide this first sphere so we don't see it. I'm gonna label it disco and then I'm gonna press control H to hide it. So now we have this new sphere right here. And so what I wanna do is scale it down. So I'm gonna call it caustic light. And then in the polysphere two, I'm going to make the same subdivision, so 30. And then right here for the scale, I'm gonna go 0.95.95 .95 and then 0.95 right there. And so now what I wanna do is right click, go to face mode, select all the faces, press Control E or Command E to extrude. And then I want to turn keep faces together off. And then on the local scale, I want to type something like 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And that makes these tiny, tiny, tiny little holes right here. And then I can shift right click, circularize components, and then if I add divisions, say two divisions, this makes some nice circles right there. And then I can just press delete to delete them. Once the faces are deleted, you'll notice I have a sphere with holes inside. So it's called projector. And then I'm going to go to the rendering shelf and I'm going to get a point light. And so now this point light is right in the middle. And then I'm gonna change the intensity to something like 500. And then I'm gonna to go to Arnold, open Arnold render view, and I'll click play. 
And now you can see on that back wall, we have these little points. So let's go ahead and bring back our disco ball. So I'll click the disco ball, press shift H. And now we have the disco ball, but now we don't have any points. That's because the disco ball is blocking all the light. So if I click the disco ball and then I uncheck cast shadows, now the lights are shining through. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that these lights are shining out from the disco ball. And what you can do is take the projector and the point light and parent them underneath the disco. So that way, if I rotate the disco ball, everything will rotate with it, which is really great. So this is a way that you can kind of fake that. And if you want it to look like there's kind of rays shining out in the atmosphere, you can go to your render settings, click on Arnold Renderer, then go down to Environment, click on Atmosphere, Create Atmosphere Volume, and then bring the density up. And you'll start to see these light rays shining off your disco ball. So that can be a great way to have an effect of a disco ball shining out into space. So you can play with that as well. So hopefully you're able to model a disco ball with this Maya tutorial and you have fun dancing and disco balling. Happy 3D modeling.